destroyed uh, homes, uh, just basically just slabs left where one stood a home. Um, massive damage. Uh, some of the uh, area has, in specific areas, the, the contents of one residence, uh, we know for a fact, was located over a thousand yards away. Uh, so we've got uh, a, a wide, very wide storm track that uh, went through the area. May have even been two storms. We're, we're not sure, but uh, uh, massive damage. Sarah Belcheski is a digital producer for the Opelika Auburn News in Alabama. She joins us now on the line. So, Sarah, search and rescue have been scaled back overnight. Uh, do you know what the plan is uh, come first light? Is there one area in particular where they plan to focus resources? And how concerned are authorities by this time tomorrow the official death toll will be a lot higher? Well, John, um, what we know for now is that they are probably going to back off for most of the night um, because the damage is too expensive and it's dangerous for crews, but they plan to hit it with the ground running right in the morning. Um, officials also told us with the National Weather Service, they plan to be out with survey crews throughout the day on Monday, surveying damage and getting more of an idea of what went through um, the area. It looks like most of the damage is around um, in Lake County, around the small country town of Beauregard. So that is probably where most of their search and rescues are going to occur tomorrow. Yeah, this is a part of the world which is no stranger to severe weather, but has there ever been a day as bad as this in terms of loss of life? Um, not Definitely not in Lake County. Um, this is probably one of the worst um, natural disasters, tornado events in the area. Um, like we said, it's just the death toll is going to continue to rise. It seems that the area went through a mobile home. Um, park kind of area in the county town. So it looks like the toll could rise, and it's definitely um, something people are keeping an eye on around here. Yeah, earlier the National Weather Service tweeted out, first tornado to impact Lee County today was at least an EF3, at least half a mile wide. So an EF3 means wind speeds up to 165 miles per hour. Um, so can you describe just how much damage has been done by a twister which is that strong and that wide? Um, I was not able to go to the Beauregard area, but from the pictures and what the rest of our team has sent back, um, that small country town, just it looks totally decimated. I went out to the other town of Smith Station, which is kind of a little bit a little larger town, and there are multiple businesses that are a complete loss, roofs ripped off. It just looks like, as one of the residents that told me that owns a business, that it looks like a bomb went off and blew up their entire business. So what are residents being told now, those whose homes are still standing or those who are in emergency accommodation, what are they being told the plan should be for the next 24 hours? Do they stay where they are? Should they try and get out? Do they try and get somewhere where um, you know, electricity and water are still functional? Um, there are definitely a couple of safe stations set up in different towns. So they are kind of looking around and um, asking people to contact the local emergency management agency to let them know that they're okay or for people to contact if they're missing someone. Right now, they're asking people just to kind of hang tight and if they can leave their house to get to one of the Red Cross shelters or another shelter um, that they have set up, such as fire stations, they're asking residents to go there. Other than that, it's kind of a bunker down, stay off the roads and let um, EMA and other first responders through to be able to clear more debris. One report I, I read had 40 uh, wounded people, injured people, turning up at one of the area hospitals, which essentially overwhelmed the medical facilities. Also being overwhelmed, uh, which is telling, is you know, the, 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 the mortuary, the morgue services as well. That is how small this community is. Uh, so clearly they are struggling with the resources they have. Uh, will there be more resources coming in first light to help with the search and rescue and help with the recovery? Um, we haven't been told so, but it wouldn't surprise me. They will probably, ha it'll be an all hands on deck situation tomorrow. It looks pretty, de it's pretty devastating in multiple areas. So I can see them bring in different agencies. Um, from what we know, the National Weather Service will definitely be on the ground tomorrow, as well as search and rescue teams. And I would assume they will bring in other teams to kind of help and go through the debris. We've been told they've been using drones to help locate possible um, lives that are buried in rubble. Just they're trying to use every means necessary with as many people as possible to get people out safely. Yeah, Sarah, it's it's a bad situation, obviously, and uh, one which hopefully get better in the coming hours and the coming days. But uh, thank you so much. We appreciate the update there. Thank you. Okay, let's go to meteorologist Pedro Amjavari with more on this. I mean, looking at those images, this is just incredible. That that what 165 miles per hour. That's you know the yeah. strength of the wind gusts. That's that's incredible.
It is incredible. You know, one thing, it's really hard to relate to folks because a lot of people haven't felt tornadoes and certainly for, uh, tornadoes of this magnitude. When you're talking about 165 miles per hour, that is a healthy Category 5 hurricane, except you get about five minutes notice. It goes over a community and it just completely takes out the communities it's directly impacting versus a hurricane where you have multiple days to prepare and, of course, on a wider uh, area of concern. But this particular one essentially brings that magnitude into an area and a community and upwards of uh, some 35 reports of tornadoes now across portions of the southern United States in the past 24 hours and the deadliest outbreak since 2013 when it comes to tornadoes as well. So an incredible perspective when you consider how things have played out here. Latest numbers now taking that up to 36. So it kind of shows you how fluid the situation is across the southern United States, which, by the way, that amount of tornadoes is equivalent to what this area of the United States and much of the U.S. get in the month of March in its entirety. And we're talking about this happening still in the winter season before spring even officially arrives. But the track, the estimated track of one of these tornadoes, the one that caused significant damage, potentially on the ground for over 65 miles, half a mile wide in diameter in spots. And again, as John referenced there, winds as high as 165 miles per hour. These are the initial estimates. And you notice the month of March typically begins to the onset of tornado season and then rapidly intensifies into what is uh, among the deadliest uh, weather events, of course, in the U.S. It happens every spring right there across portions of Tornado Alley into areas of the southeast. But the intensity of the storms beginning to wind down. Look at this. Almost 10,000 lightning strikes for these storms in the past 24 hours. There is what is left of this frontal boundary beginning to push offshore. So now back behind it, this recovery mode across this region of the southern U.S. But you go into northern tier of this particular storm system, and we often talk about the clash of air masses, what leads to strong tornadoes, blizzard-like conditions across portions of interior New England right now, uh, gusty winds and also heavy snowfall coming down in parts of town, winter weather advisories across the northeast as well, and in fact, very heavy rain, uh, snowfall into parts of Boston. Some models estimating as much as 8 to 12 inches of snow in Boston. If this verifies here, that is roughly already what has occurred so far in 2019 happening here into the overnight hours and early morning hours for Boston. So certainly a big snowmaker as well as a big severe weather maker on the southern end of it into the southern U.S., John. And the big takeaway for me and everything you said is that this is the start this of the, very start. Uh, yeah, the tornado yeah. season. So um, there's obviously a lot more to come. Yes. Thanks, Pedro. Thanks, John.